Welcome to the how to play video for Sabotage. Uh, I'm going to do a quick run through, teach you the basics, and get you going. Um, so Sabotage comes in this crazy box that also acts as the barrier for the game. When you first open it, you're going to find a couple things. There is a quick play, uh, a quick setup rules. This has some basic uh, steps to kind of get you going. Um, it's, a, it's a good reference. Um, also loose are these cheat sheet cards. Set them aside for now. And then there's the big, yeah, the big instructions. Um, the most important thing is going to be this, this big diagram of kind of how the game is set up. But we'll be going through all those steps. So inside there's two trays. There's one tray that's for all of the spy team. So all the miniatures for the spy, the spy player boards, um, the tokens, the walls, and then the, the uh, program tiles are also in there. Uh, and your your dice for your team. So they all they all have spots in the in the tray. So you pull it out and you give uh, the tray for the spies to spies, it's the trays for the villains to villains. And uh, you don't have to put the barrier up quite yet. So the way sabotage works is the spy. It's two spies versus two villains. The spies are infiltrating the volcano lair of Count V and his. Uh, villain friends, and they have doomsday devices set up. Now it's played on a 4x4 grid. Um, you can play with the other side that has a little more flavor if you want. Um, and if you, if you look at the, 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 uh, the starting setup, you're going to be placing walls uh, between, the, between squares on here. Uh, you're going to be placing three doomsday devices and two generators. Um, the, the doomsday devices are kind of the victory condition for the spies. If they can get in and hack the doomsday devices a certain number of times, they win. But as they're sneaking around trying to do that, the villains are hunting them. Um, and if the villains can shoot them um, a number of times, uh, then, the, then the villains win. So that's the, the overall goal. Now, the trick about that is both sides are programming what they're going to do. Um, and wh what they used to program are the dice. So what happens is one of the villains takes four dice and rolls, you know, rolls four numbers. Now there are numbers, these, num these are numbers one through six, like normal dice, and they're going to announce those numbers to everybody else. So in this case, I got uh, two, three, four, six. Now all four players are going to take their four dice and set to those exact numbers. And they're going to use those numbers to program what they're going to do that turn on their player board. So on your player board, along the bottom, there's action one, two, three, and four. You're going to be using your uh, you're going to be using your your program tiles, setting placing them in here um, in the sequence that they're going to execute. So you can do up to four things on your turn. Now, uh, the the both both teams have slightly different actions, but there are some common ones between them. But the the main requirement is as you're programming, um, it'll show down in the bottom right the exact number that has to be shown for you to be able to use that tile. So in the case of a move tile, um, it uses a one through a four. So you can use any, any number one through four and place it on that die. So now that die is used for the turn. Um, so, you, so you have to place the tiles that you want to use, but you're limited by how many of the four dice you can use because both teams initially can only use two dice of the four. Now they can choose any four or any two of the four. Um, so, and, and, and even on, on the same team, like they, you know, they both could use the six, but maybe one teammate uses the four and the other teammate uses the three. Um, but everyone's, everyone's using those numbers. And, um, I'll go through a little bit first on how the villains go through the turn, but the general structure is the villain rolls the dice. Everyone programs using those numbers, what they're going to do that turn. They lock it in. And when both teams say they're ready, the the villains go first. So, and, and how that works is the villains choose one of the teammates to execute their, their program first. They go through that program, um, and as they're going through their program, they announce anything that, that they're required to. Because there's a barrier in between, so they can't see what's going on on the other side. So there's a very strict communication of what you're supposed to say to the other team, because you don't want to give up too much information about where you are to the other team. Neither team really knows exactly where the other team are at any given point. Um, so, so as one villain goes through his, his program, executes everything, moves his guy on the board, whatever he does, 
Um, the, then the other villain goes. So they can choose which order they want to go in, but one does their whole program, and then the other one does their whole program. Then it goes over to the spies. Now, if the spies aren't, haven't been shot, then they get to go ahead and take their turn. So the spies, again, they can go in any order. One spy will go, execute his program. Second spy will go, execute his program. When everyone's taken their turn, um, one of the villains rolls the dice again, and you, know, you go into the next round. Uh, if at any point the win conditions are met by the number of hits or the number of hacks, um, the game is over. Now, there is a track on the middle of this barrier, so the way this opens up is you open it like this, and you usually want to have this doomsday panel face the, the villains because they need their control panel. Um, along the top here there are grooves that it, you'll see in setup how many, uh, how many hacks and how many hits. Um, uh, are to come off as the game proceeds. So both teams can see this and know how close they are to victory or defeat. So um, let's go through, let's, let's dig into programming a little bit more. So let's get uh, the villains over here. All right, so villains, um, villains have more of a deduction role in the game. So they are, they are trying to hunt, figure out where the, the, the spies are, and you know they have a whole range of freeze rays and death rays and, and whatnot to, to try to uh, find and shoot them. Uh, okay, so the basic kit for uh, a villain, let me find one here. Uh, so we have move, flat, well, okay, not flashlight. Move, um, uh, stun gun, motion detector, and where's the generator? Generator. So the basic kit is move um, for a villain is you actually, you, you, it requires a one through four and you actually walk in the direction you're going to move. So there's four arrows on this tile. You actually put the direction you're gonna move on there. So I'm gonna use a three to move and I'm gonna move up. I go ahead and put the three uh, in, in the slot I want it to execute uh, on the, in the up direction. So the move doesn't move you three if you use a three on it. It just moves you one square in that direction. It can just use a one through four to activate. So um, now moving for, for moving for villains is silent. So whenever they move, they don't have to say anything. Um, the next is the stun gun. So the stun gun uses a five or six and it will shoot an adjacent tile with their stun gun. And um, when they declare that, so they, they, so when they, you know, and here it's, they have to say, I stun gun and then they have to say the adjacent tile. They can't shoot through a wall and they have to say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm shooting into B. Now, any spies there have to say if they're there and if they got shot. Um, and basically, if a spy gets shot, he, he gets knocked off the board and he has to parachute back on the board. So that he kind of loses a turn. That's, and, and it also moves the, moves the villains towards victory. Um, now, the, the, the generator, uh, the generator is a, takes a three or a four. And if a villain is on a space that has a generator, they take a blue cube, one of the translucent blue cubes, and puts it in, uh, and puts it on the side of the generator uh, miniature. So the generator miniature has two little spots on the side that fit, uh, you know, the two, the two. Uh, there, there's two for each generator. Once it has two, it's activated. So it takes it takes the the um, villains two actions to activate a generator, and then it's online. If a generator is online, that actually gives both villains access to more dice. So um, getting generators online is really important, but also the spies know that. Um, they can even attack the generator. So if they come and hack a generator, then the, the villains actually have one less dice to use. So they start with two. If they get both generators online, they get four actions. Uh, or they get to use, sorry, they get, they get four dice to use. It doesn't always mean four actions because some actions take multiple dice to activate. Um, and then motion detector is, this one's a little tricky. This is a way for the villains to get information. Um, they, they choose a, they use a one or a two and then they, uh, they choose a row, a column, or a quadrant. So, and this is gonna come up a lot. So the board has, you know, if you're, I'm declaring a column, I can say like the B column, or I can say like the A row, or I can say like the green quadrant. They pick one of those and then the, the, uh, the spies have to declare how many spies are in the area that they declared. So the, the villains can use that information to decide 
you know, do I want, which way do I want to shoot? So you can even put that in your sequence. You're like, okay, I'm going to motion detect to eliminate somebody being here, and then I'm going to go ahead and shoot this way to try to get my spy. Um, there are, I won't go into all the advanced abilities, um, but the, the, that's the basic kit for how villains uh, move around. Now, um, so on a lot of the early turns, villains are just going to say nothing to declare because they're moving around, they're getting a generator online, um, and they're mostly just declaring when they're shooting or using motion detector. Um, so the, uh, the spies. Now the spies work on a similar, similar principle. They, they have two dice to use, and they're going to be, be able to unlock more dice to use, and that's indicated up here with what's called the swagger track. Um, but we'll get into that. So a core piece of how spies work is what's called move and scan. Let me see if I can find one here. Um, so, so it's the move, it's the same move tile, but it's for the spies. It's, it's a, it, this is the, really the core of how sabotage works. So what happens is they, they use a one through four to program a move. So they put in one of their spots, right? And they, they, they have to lock in the direction. Oh, one thing to mention too is move, you have to choose the direction when you're programming. Other things like the, the, the stun gun and, and um, motion detector, it, you do not have to lock in where you're going to use it. Um, so the, and the tiles will, will indicate. Um, so a, a, a villain has to lock in how he's moving, but he, doesn't, he can choose when he's executing which way he wants to shoot. So back to the, the so scan and move. So the spy locks in uh, one of the directions he's going to move. And then when, he's execu when he executes, so say I'm a spy and I'm on K. And I programmed that I'm going to move down into O on, on this turn. Now, when, when a spy executes, his, uh, executes a move, he has to do what's called a scan. And what a scan is, is he has to reveal the column, the row, or the quadrant he moved into. So I'm moving into O, I have to say, I'm in the M row, or I'm in the C column, or I'm in the red quadrant. So I have to say one of those um, as, as free information to the other team. But it's actually a, a, a scan, it goes both ways. When I say red, the villains now have to tell me if any of them are in that area. So I'm saying I'm there, but if they're there as well, they have to tell me. And that lets me know where they're at, and it drives the spy economy. Spies getting information about where villains are kind of indicate uh, intel, like they, they know things. So they're gonna get, every time a, a villain is revealed for the first time on a given round, um, both spies get a, an unlock cube, the clear cubes, and they can decide whether to put it into one of their, to, to, to unlock new tiles along the top, it's like a tech tree, or they can decide to put it into their swagger track. And their swagger allows them to use more dice. So, the, so when you're scanning, this is the really the tricky part of the game. This is why we, 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 you really should play the intro game first with all, all the crazy gadgets, because playing the game with just moving and scanning and doing it intelligently because there's a lot of factors. When I'm deciding what to say when I'm moving into this O has a lot of factors. Like if, I, if I don't say, if, if, I, if I'm kind of reckless about it, the other team can very quickly deduce where I am. Um, and beyond that, it can happen multiple, if every time I move during my turn, I have to scan. So you want to plan your turn out saying like, okay, if I'm going from G to K to O, I could declare the, you know, when I'm moving to G to K, I can say, okay, I'm in the I row. And then when I'm going to, to O, I can say I'm in the M, uh, the M row. So as I'm moving down, I can declare these, or I could just keep declaring the C row. I can say, I'm in, oh, C column. I'm in the C column. And then I go down again. I'm in the C column. So now they don't know what direction I'm moving on the C column. So you can kind of obfuscate what you're doing by, by scanning. But the guy who scans these rows also is covering a lot of areas for finding villains. When you find villains, you get more. You get that, 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 that un, those unlock cubes, which are going to give you help you help you get better. So it's tricky. There's there's definitely some risks in, in what you're revealing when you're when you're moving and scanning. So um, so that's the core piece, and and uh, it, it it just takes practice. You have to you'll you'll find when you're playing both sides that you learn how to to scan effectively and decide what risks to take with what you're, with what you're revealing. Um, so the other parts of what spies do. All right, so first of all, spies have to get on the map. 
Um, so if they're ever, if they've ever, if they're starting the game or after they've been shot, on their next turn they're required to do the parachute maneuver as their first programmed action. It doesn't require any dice. So what they do is they pick, they take their their miniature, and um, when they program it, they have to choose where they're going to parachute on the map, and they just lay their miniature down. The miniature is not vulnerable yet; he can't be shot by, by anything. But when you actually execute the parachute, you stand the, the, the miniature up on the spot that you had cho previously chosen. Um, now, one thing that you do have to declare when you do a parachute is you have to say what half of the map you, you landed on. And usually we do this by just saying two colors. So I landed on the blue-green half of the map, or I landed on the green-red part of the map. Now, this isn't a scan. The villains don't have to say if they're there. This is a, this is a special thing only for parachute to give the villains a general idea of kind of where, where the spy has landed. Their, their proximity sensors have gone off, and, and they're, getting, they're getting a little bit of information of where they might be. Um, usually they're going to parachute and then immediately start moving. Um, one really important thing for the villains is we gave you a whole bunch of these glass beads. Um, there's two different colors. So as you're listening to these scans, and you're like, oh man, they, they, he just said the, the M row, I'm going to go ahead and choose a color for that player, I'm going to mark all four of those. And then when he moves, I'm going to be like, hmm, well if he could have been in one of these places and he moved up to the I row, but there was a wall here, now he could really only be in these three. He couldn't be in this one because there was a wall in the way. So, uh, so use these, the, the, the vill villains use these liberally to try to track where you think the spies are. Because knowing where the spies are is the whole game. If you can, because you're, you're going to move before they get a chance to go away. So if, the, if a spy is foolish about where, giving him information, you're going to be able to pro program and execute and run over there and shoot him before he, can, before he even has a chance to move. So, um, so parachute is always your first action. If you get shot as a, as a spy, you lose that turn. On the next turn, you have to do a parachute action and drop onto the board. The other thing about parachute is on a turn that you parachute, you can't do a hack action. So you can't like drop right onto a doomsday or a, or a generator and hack it and you know, it, so you have to, you have to wait a turn. Um, all right, uh, the, other, the, the other big one is hack. Let's see if I can find one here. Um, hack is the primary way you win. Um, let's see. Here we go. So a hack takes a five or a six, and when you program it, you have to be in the same room. And when you hack, um, you declare I hacked H. And if there is a doomsday there, you remove a doomsday cube from uh, from the 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 doom because the doomsday device actually holds um, the the doomsday cubes on top of it, and you hand it over to the villain saying. I hack this, this space. So you're doing a hard tell. You're telling them exactly where you are. So you need to get a, have a plan to get out of there. You can also opt to, to hack a generator. It'll, it will remove a cube from a generator, which will shut it down. If, if it has less than two, then it's not running anymore. So you can hurt the villain's kind of like dice economy by going after generators. Um, so, so hacking is, is essential and tricky. Um, that you do get some advanced abilities that make it make it a little bit uh, ways you can hack from a distance or you can uh, do a delayed hack, but but hacking is the core piece of what you do. So you need to get out of there. Uh, very often, at least give them a 50-50. Like if I hack H and then I and then I move up, I want to scan this column so they're not sure if I moved up or if I moved down. So they they so they have to try it. so they can't shoot both of the places. So hacking and then earpiece is one of the early tricks that you have as a spy. When it requires a one, and when you earpiece, you get to move your teammate without scanning. So you're able to, you're able to say, I earpiece my teammate, and that's all you say. You don't say what direction, you don't, you don't have to do any scan. So it requires a one, so um, you can't always do it, but it's, it's a really great move to throw off the deduction. What, you know, so you may be, you may be um, you know, the, you hack something and then you have your teammate go second and he earpieces you off of there, um, which gets you out of the way, but they have no idea what direction you went in. So um, that's the basic kit for the, the, uh, the spies. And um, so one thing, about, um, is, one thing about swagger is in the intro game, you can't lose swagger. But when you get into the advanced games, you will get, you will get 
um, different villain abilities that will reveal you. And anything that reveals you, there's flashlight, um, there's a flare, uh, there's Doppler, any of those that reveal your location, um, you, whenever you get spotted by a villain, it's kind of the opposite of intel. They now have intel on you. So whenever you're spotted, you have to lose swagger. So you fill up the swagger track from, from left to right. And whenever, when, once you have two in here, you get an extra die. Once you have five in here, you get, uh, a, you get your third die and you get your fourth, fourth die. So uh, whenever you get revealed by a flashlight, you now have to lose swagger down to the nearest red line. So if you're here, you're going to lose two. If you're here, you're going to lose three. Um, uh, pro tip, sometimes you just keep one, you know, one, you keep three on this track so that if you, so if you get spotted, you really only lose one. So that's kind of where a lot of spies hang out. But having that four dice is really powerful. So um, sometimes you, you just kind of risk it. Um, alternatively, spies can put, um, instead of investing in swagger when they see somebody, when you're playing the full game, what happens is you take all of the, you, you choose a character, and on setup you take all of the cards um, for a particular character, and you put them along the top you know, in these spots. So you have tier one, tier two, tier, tier three. And as you invest in different things, so once you have one here, you get your tier one, and then, once you, and then the next two, once you fill this up, you now have to choose between which tier two ability you want to take. You can never take both. Um, and then when you fill in this, you, get, you choose a tier three. Um, villains function in a similar way. Now, if you get spotted, you don't lose any upgrades. So it's, investing in upgrades is a little bit safer. But swagger, you, can, you lose whenever you get spotted by a spy. Now, you don't lose swagger when you get shot. When you get shot, you just lose your turn, um, but you get to keep any swagger that you had. Um, so uh, the villains, what they do is they put, a, they put an unlock cube on all six of these numbers here. And on their turn, instead of using a die to program, they can take that number and replace, uh, or basically they, they kind of push out whatever cube was on there. So if I, if I still had a cube on my six, um, I would put a, I'd put a six on there from these dice that we rolled. And that now it's, it's available, I get to put a cube up in my unlock track. So investing dice into unlocking your abilities is a big part of the villains. Now, the villains get some pretty crazy guns and abilities, um, so investing and unlocking is, is, is really good. Now, as you knock out different unlock cubes from this track, you're going to get more and more constrained in the future. Eventually, there's only going to be one left, and you have to get that exact number to get that last cube. So each, each base, basically, each number unlocks one cube, so you want to kind of think about what, you know, what numbers to, to knock out when you're unlocking stuff. Um, and again, this goes against your limit. If, Initially, you can only use two dice. So if you use one dice to program um, and one dice to unlock, that's your whole turn. So sometimes this, the villains will just kind of like hunker down um, and just try to unlock stuff so they, they can come out with guns blazing. Because villains get some pretty crazy guns, um, and that's the pressure on the spies. If the spies give the, the, the villains too much time and too many generators, they'll just start blowing holes. And they, they'll, they have weapons that blow out walls and take out a whole row and just kill everybody in that row. row. Um, so, but, you know, spies get some pretty good stuff too. They can start teleporting around. They can start hacking from a distance. Um, there is, you know, they, they get some advantages as well. Um, all right, so uh, uh, there is, there are two different colored cubes that are used to, to help score the game and they're beneficial. So both teams start with two yellow cubes. These are what are called modified. Because sometimes you just don't get the numbers that you want. When you program, you're like, man, we don't have a five or a six and we want to shoot this guy. We know where he's at. So you can use a modify. Modify, when you use it, you put it on top of the dice and it moves it up or down a number. So you don't actually have to change the die. Just when you're programming, take, one of, take the modify cube from your collective pool. Usually you keep it near your shared board. The board goes between the two players. You're gonna put it down here so both of you have access to it. Each cube will modify one number, up or down one, but it can also change a six to a one and a one to, one to a six. So, um, but you only have two of them at the beginning, so use them sparingly. They don't change the dice for both players. Um, and you wanna keep the, the cube on top because you might change your, before you're done programming, you might change your, 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 your mind, and this way you won't have to change the die back to what it was before. You just keep the modify cube on top of it. So both teams get two modify, 
And whenever the other team gets a, a, a hack, so what happens is you fill in a whole bunch of modified cubes in the hack track. And whenever the villain, or whenever the spies hack a doomsday and hand that cube over to you, you put it in your doomsday so you can remember which doomsdays have been hacked, because um, each one has three or four um, um, hack cubes in it. You also take a, a, a modify cube um, as a kind of a score counter, and you kind of get it as a consolation prize. So the villains take one off the hack track. And what's going to happen is the hack track, once it's empty, um, the next time they get hacked, the game's over. So there's kind of like, so in, in, in the beginner game, um, there are, I think, four, there's, yeah, there's four modify cubes in here. And you take out one each time, and then the fifth hack, the game's over. Now over here, there's two tracks for the, for the hits. And there's a, one, one filled with yellow cubes and one filled with, filled with green cubes. And whenever a spy gets hit, he you know, loses a turn, he's got to parachute back in, all that stuff. The, as a consolation prize, the, uh, the, the spies get a green and a yellow cube off of their hits track. And again, once this track is empty, the next time they get hit, the game's over. Now what the green cube does, this is called slide, and this is premium re resource. This is a shared resource that allows either player to slide into another room totally silently. It does not have to be programmed. So if maybe my teammate was going to help me out and like earpiece me or something, and, um, and now they got shot, and so they lost their turn, um, and so I'm going to be exposed. If I hack this thing, they're going to know exactly where I'm at. I'm going to go ahead and after I execute my hack, I'm going to silently use my slide cube to move one square out of the way um, um, unbeknownst to them. Now, this is a very limited resource, uh, so you want to use it sparingly, but don't be too stingy with it. Um, y y if you use it at critical times, it can absolutely throw the villains on off on where they think you are. You can use it multiple times if you have multiple cubes. In a pinch, you can slide into two rooms, um, but you only get it when you get hit. Each time one of your teammates get hit, you get a, a modify cube and a slide cube off the track. Um, so uh, other than that, I mean, there's a lot of um, individual uh, advanced abilities. Some of them will build things um, because, I mean, you're going to start with doomsdays and walls and whatnot on the board. Um, but the, the, there are abilities like certain booby traps that the villains or the spies can build. Um, and on the ability, if it says build, you build it on your square. Um, and there are, there are these circular tokens to indicate that you built it there. Building is silent. So the other team doesn't know that you've built it until they trigger it. And then you're like, oh, I have a thing there. Now, if a room gets shot um, by a villain, any spy devices in that, in that, uh, in that room are gone. Um, or if a room gets hacked, all of the villain devices get disabled. So um, they do get cleared up by those actions. But um, also, if you do a, if you do a, a reveal, like with a flashlight, um, the, then you get to uh, you you get to see any um, spy devices in that in that column. So um, that's that's I think most of it. I'm sure I missed something. Look at the notes below. I'll put any I'll have an FAQ below this below this on the web page, and uh, enjoy the game.